like I was saying, on today's agenda, I need to trim off the veneer, then I need to fit the neck onto the body, and then begin radiusing the fretboard. Hopefully we're gonna get the fretboard radius today, and the inlay engraved and filled with ebony dust and sanded so that tomorrow I can go to the workshop and carve the neck. And then all that's left is sanding and then putting it into the body after Neela has had a little try to see whether the carve feels good. Let's remove the excess. I'm not gonna use my inlay. So, hello Frankie, nice to have you here. Um, I was kind of hoping as well that, or ex hoping, expecting, one of those words that you would probably pop by seeing as this is a time when you're actually awake, I believe. Yeah, <laughs> what time is it over there by the way? p.m. Oh, okay. That's not even that bad. I thought it might have been a good bit later, but yeah. I really need to be mindful of not spilling my coffee while I'm doing this, so let me have a quick sip of that. Just make sure that it's not that full. Bring that one in a bit closer. Just me, or is that really short neck pocket? Contact surface area looks a bit small. Back to your streaming time, if it hasn't been much later. Sounds of sanding is all in with flawlessly. Yeah. Um, when it boils down to it, you don't actually need quite a lot or a very long neck pocket. There is a lot of surface area on each side. And if you actually look at some of the, um, some tellies or strats, I know they're bolt-ons, but nonetheless, they actually have a very short um, treble side as well. But this should be more than enough to actually hold the neck completely in place. And I have no worries about that, but yeah. When I was scaling it out, I was trying to really think about this, but yeah, didn't run into any issues, so to speak. Okay, that's 24th. If only I could get all of these as bright as this one. This one's great. Look at that. That one's good. If I could get the rest of them looking like that, that would be fantastic. No, no. It's giving a very faint, faint glow in the neck pocket already. So I hope it hasn't cracked somewhere along the way. That would be annoying. Hopefully I can still get all of them to work. Might also be the ends are not 100% the way that they should be. Um, yep, any break, crack, even twist in the fiber optics will lead to light loss, yep. Uh, no, I mean, I do get, there's, I would prefer, like in most cases, look at it from like the base side, about 65 mil is what I would prefer to be like a sort of minimum. And this is, this one is, actually 70 mil on the base side and about 20 on the treble side. 
And it's a lot more to do with the fact of how I have the actual scoop here. If I put it in any further, um, the last higher up frets will be kind of far away and I feel that the neck would be a little bit too pushed in. So visually, I think that that also works out a lot better. But I completely get what you mean. And I was that way for a very long time. Um, for instance, like looking back at uh, the Scum guitar or the first multiscale that I built, those are very far in set next because I was too afraid to move the neck up anymore than what I did. But comparingly, also, not that far, far back, looking at like the first proper um, stock instruments, the necks on these are pretty far set in. But to be honest, these guitars were started a very, very long time ago. <sighs> they were only finished last year. Well, I say finished. I, um, for the most part, they were finished. And there's a data list just to kind of compare. So again, it's right around, yeah, it's about that much. The last three frets is about how far set the neck is in and hasn't fallen apart yet. Not even with string tension or anything else. It's stayed in good condition. Then there's the, oh geez, five string bass, which has a very long tenon going all the way in. So that definitely isn't coming loose anytime soon but it's also a bolt-on with six bolts in it. And that's gonna be the next one that I actually do the fiber optic stuff with. I'm not gonna be using the two mil like I did with this. Um, I ordered some more in October, and they didn't show. Still haven't shown up, and I need to contact the seller, ask what the hell is up, because I want my, I want what I paid for. First things first, before I start radiusing. Okay, good. But yeah, if, um, there have been twists or cracks in the fiber optics. I will probably have to replace the side dots with lumen lays, which will be a shame, putting in all that extra effort for something that didn't work. Um, still, fiber optics is much easier than trying to use LEDs as evidenced by your old boss, Ben. And also as evidenced by the this unfortunate beastie. Remember this one? So this had the LED fret lines and the big LED like inlay on the 12th fret. All well and good except one day at a show that Johnny was playing, there was a short circuit somewhere along the way, burned out the battery and annihilated everything. So this neck, is now completely obsolete. What I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be taking this apart, making a new neck for this, which at the same time, I'm gonna make it a little bit thinner um, and I'm gonna make it a little bit wider on the bridge end. Actually, I'm gonna make it a little bit wider on just in general and get it a little bit better seated. This was the first time that I was using some unfamiliar threaded inserts, which have since started to poke out a little bit. I don't know if you can see that. And no, I don't have any problems showing off my mistakes from the past because this is how I learn. This is how I learn to do things better and everybody makes mistakes. So yeah, going to be making a new neck, gonna do a little bit more refinishing because this was the last 
or one of the last um, instruments that I fully painted on the balcony. And when I did it, I believe the last few layers of me um, painting this on the balcony, it was midsummer or just hot weather in general. And the it just didn't, I don't know, somehow didn't cure properly because it's very, it ended up being very sticky. Now it seems like it's evened out a little bit, but the overall feel of everything just doesn't sit right with me. So gonna be refinishing, well not refinishing, but putting in a fresh coat of uh, clear on this. Also wanna get good screws for the pickups. They're sitting very low currently, so I want those lifted up a little bit. Gonna put some foam behind there and springs, or better springs. Hey, Tiff is going, Tiff is going to cry. Um, I missed that, but thank you very much for following. You're bringing us that much closer to the first hundred. Um, I really, really, really do appreciate that. Anywho, so yeah, gonna be putting in fiber optics for this as well when that time comes around. But first, I need to finish the seven string. <clears throat> but hey, I am doing pretty good. Gonna be a full day of guitar building ahead. So, yeah, or a full weekend. The camera's off, isn't it? I need to fix that ever so slight. Also, after this project is done, I really need to resurface my work table because it looks nasty. There we go. Saturday mornings. Uh, yeah, it is a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I know, I know. The thing is, I never said that you're wrong. I, you're completely right. And you're actually saying the things that I've been thinking about, but ignoring inside my own head. But yeah. Thank you, though. <laughs> Uh, you, you make valid points. And I don't know what I'm stressing about. I'm in, I'm in good headspace. I'm working on guitars, which is something I haven't been able to do as much um, last, at the end of last year. I'm getting back into things, I'm back on Twitch, which also makes me very happy. And honestly, there's not really that many things, or it's not really much going wrong with this build. Knock on wood, right? Uh, I've had that thought myself, get some year and a half of MDF or something. Fresh project, fresh top, add it to the work table. Yeah. Um, what I'm thinking is that, because this has a sort of white sticker top on it, that I'm gonna get one of those. Um, just reapply that here because this is, as much as it doesn't look like it, it is a shared table between myself and my significant other who does, you know, works with clothes and seem, seeming stuff. I don't know what the English equivalent of her degree is. Um, Valid points coming from my own mistakes made. Seamstress, yeah, kinda, because I thought that that would be what it is, but then when I've talked about it, like, talked about seamstresses, or 
if she's a seamstress by trade, then she said that not quite, that she has then like a higher education for certain aspects of the field above that. So I don't, I don't freaking know. Corner or thinking about something else. You're absolutely right. And that has been my train of thought with everything leading up to this point. So I don't know why at this point, I guess because it's such a menial task, very tedious, just radiusing, just radiusing a fretboard um, that I kind of push it aside, which is something that I should definitely not do because if I don't radius the fretboard properly, it can end up with bad consequences. So this is a process that I really do need to do properly. And uh, yeah. I shouldn't overlook, as it were. Worthy note that if you don't have a bag of ebony dust, next time you get ebony dust somehow, get a bag of ebony dust. It's very useful stuff. I completely understand that sentiment. And honestly, there is one of two ways that your first neck is gonna go. The more likely option is that your first neck is gonna be huge, it's gonna be way too thick. And the other option is that it's gonna be way too thin and break. I have done both. Um, wonder which one of the very first neck that I did. The very first neck that I did was way too thick. And the second one was way too thin and went into the truss rod cavity. And it was also too narrow so that at around like the first fret or something that as the neck tapered off and rounded over, you could see the fret board from the back of the neck, which was <laughs> kind of bad. But yeah, another way of doing it is just getting scrap right dimensioned wood and then making, you know, test pieces out of like pine or something like that. More, not the workability aspect of it, but more the shape of it. Although pine is hell to work with, but you get my point. Some sort of scrap wood that you have in the right dimensions that you can work around into uh, the rough shape of a neck. Don't need to do the truss rod, don't need to do anything like that. Just focus on the neck carve itself first because putting on the fretboard, radiating truss rod, all that stuff, that's uh, a little bit more straightforward, but still something that you kind of need to take the time to do properly. So you don't, for instance, do the truss rod too deep inset or not deep enough. But in general, just, just starting to figure out how to get that carve right and finding your own process, what works best for you, um, goes a long way into you know, practicing that part. That is a very good way of going about it. And the very, very first prototypes of the Daedalus and Icarus, those necks are actually made out of mahogany skirting boards. And uh, they, they worked out pretty well. But yeah, if you can get cheap lumber for that sort of stuff, then it is well worth kind of like using it as a practice piece or using them as practice pieces. Very good point. Because with, with using pine, is you might get frustrated with the workability more than you're actually trying to learn from it. Um, if you have something that's a bit closer to the sort of density that you're gonna be working with, it might be a bit easier to gauge how to go through the process. Ooh, all what you, everything you just said sounds great. That's actually one of those things that I, I kind of want to start doing as well. That if I know that there's some houses, old houses, or old, old buildings being torn down, I would want to see if there's some wood that could be salvaged from that. More than likely, it's just gonna be like sort of pine um, over here. Maybe, maybe something nicer, but more than likely not. But nonetheless, I would still love to reuse that instead of having that stuff be burned or 
turn into mulch or something like that. That was, that was fun at Crimson as well. There was the fire station that was um, taken apart or old fire station. And then we made guitars out of that and burned the bodies. That was fun. And uh, I, I, thought the con I thought the concept was a lot of fun. Keep my eye out for any news of old venues and pubs that may be demolished, turn old bar top and old dance floor into guitar. Good man, good man. That's a very good way of going about things. Recycling stuff like that, that's something that's very close to my heart. And it's also a fun story, like a very fun story that, hey, this used to be this and that. Um, none of those are anything like that. But once again, the very first iCurs and Daedalus prototypes, old, like um, salvaged oak top from some sort of table and then skirting board material or leftover skirting boards for the next. Uh, Fret boards was one fretboard was leftover stuff or stock from tools that were being made at Crimson, and one I had to buy. That was still in the days when I would just use whatever I could get my hands on. In the uh, ye olde days of uh, my guitar building journey. And I mean, come on, there's um, uh, God, how how do I not remember the story now? But I mean, Fender, Gibson, or Fender and Leo. Les... <gasps> Leo Fender and Les Paul uh, making guitars out of this than the other. It's a very good, good way of thinking about it too. I mean, wasn't it Les Paul who used like uh, Railroad? What, what, what was it? Was it? It was some piece of a railroad, I believe. Like a huge chunk of wood or something like that. Something like that, I can't remember. But nonetheless, use what you got. And the results can be very surprising. I'm sure you can check that, um, check out Leo Fender and Les Paul and guitars built in the very, very beginning stages and what they were made out of. And look what that ended up in. The original log Les Paul Sully by was made by four inch square block of pine. That's one, yep. Getting closer now. It's a little bit to go. I can see some pencil lines still. There's a little bit there. It's nicely thinning out, which means that uh, it's going in, or the radius is going in uh, smoothly and straight. Lear Thunder just used what wood he could get cheap, yep. So I remembered half of both stories. <laughs> Around to making those recycled timber necks. You know I'm gonna be hitting you up for some of that brass from your grandfather to make them. Absolutely, I will happily send you some of that. Without a doubt. It reminded me that I really, really need to, uh, I promised to send Iomar guitars some of the birch veneer, but I still haven't gotten around to that and I really do need to do that and almost there there up oh, a little bit very tiny line to go now to check that I got that radius correctly good good Great, great, good, yep, 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 yep. The thing is that I would, the hand plane would be a great way to go about it, 
but I don't have any sharp hand blades at the moment. <laughs> I need to sharpen all my tools after this build is done. It's been a long time coming. So now I am just using, uh, I believe 240. Yep, 240. Sand the prep board again in preparation for the engraving. It's gonna be fun. Now, first I need to do a engraving test piece. Before I do that, I need to put in some earplugs. Um, I'm gonna mute my audio and give you a little bit more music because it's gonna get a bit loud now with the Dremel, but I'll be back in a bit. I mean, you'll see me do stuff, but yeah, I'll be back talking in a bit. Hello Raiders, uh, welcome to the stream. Thank you very much. So yeah, basically doing some guitar building stuff and working on this, this uh, seven string Evertune Beastie. Uh, let's see if that works. Uh, so what exactly are you doing right now? Do you do this as a job or just a hobby? So first off, I'm, oh, sorry for yelling, I have earplugs in. So currently what I'm about to do is I'm gonna test some engraving stuff because I'm gonna be engraving this inlay with some added details and I need to test it whether, you know, the bit that I have is actually gonna work on this process. And I, I don't do this as my day job. I still have a day job and this is kind of um, a secondary. I do have an actual company that makes actual guitars, um, but it's not my full time job, so to speak. And this neck is going to be going into this guitar. And today what we're doing is basically getting it to the point where the neck is fitted to the guitar and then tomorrow I will be actually carving the neck. So that's going to be a whole lot of fun. I'm basically working today up until the point where I can do the work that needs to be done tomorrow. Uh, we're a community that raids from Discord. We like to go around and say hi to new people, and today we've come to see you. Oh, that is actually a very cool idea, and thank you so much for stopping by. Um, usually I don't stream at this time, but I got two days of just working on this, so I thought I might as well stream while I'm at it. Are you working at, working at making it your full time? At some point, yes. I'm hoping that this will actually be something that um, I can do that kind of supports itself. If you're interested, I can whisper you more information about us so you can decide later if you're interested. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, but hey, to you new people who are actually raiding, if you're just stopping by, I'm gonna show you kind of the stuff that I usually do. Uh, these are guitars that I worked on last summer on the stream. Get you some better light than this green one. Oh, no. A part of four guitars, one of which was sent to Florida. And then this one. And I can't actually, I don't have glasses on right now, so I can't see the comments. So give me a sec. Yes, I mean, I make them from scratch, so 
When I started doing my job, so to speak, they start out with just raw planks of wood and I work them down up until they look like that and are ready to go and good to play instruments. Uh, yes, and I also love to keep the wooden texture. I, I am not the biggest fan of covering up all that beautiful wood grain with paint. I mean, I do do it and the one that I just finished was um, fully white. Oh, Mass Bandit, thank you so much for actually following. You're bringing us that much closer to 100 followers, which I really, really, really appreciate. Um, yeah, so what was I saying? Yeah, usually I don't like to paint a full solid color because I like to see the wood underneath. Um, love the blue. Thank you, Rough Guitar Studio, hello. Um, yeah, and when it comes to fully fledged ready instruments, here's one that I've made a few years back. My own personal guitar. This used to be a very old prototype that I, um, I think last year did up, did a uh, fully upgrade thing on. Then as an experiment, I made a guitar fully out of pine. Now this cost about 80 bucks to make, including everything. All the hardware, all the woods and everything just cost 80 bucks to make. Body is pine, fretboard is pine, neck is pine, backplate. And I'm surprised at how this has turned out. It's still, it plays very well, it's in tune. And And uh, yeah, very lightweight. I really like it. Yes, hi, from Finland, uh, Torille. Uh, gotta lurk, all right. I am gonna get back to work now that I've kind of introduced you to what it is that I do around here. Um, I'm gonna get back to it, which is gonna be noisy stuff. I'm gonna mute my mic audio and I'm gonna pump up the volume for the music. But thank you so much for stopping by. And thank you to all the new followers. So Templar91, Mass Bandit, uh, Quack Quack, Smisk. I really do appreciate it, like so much. Thank you very, very much. All right, gonna turn off the mute, uh, audio now. Ah, oh, yeah. Frankie has a good point about um, a guitar that I don't have, but the guitar that I sent to Florida was made for none other than Matt Heathy of Trivium. And, uh, that's with him in Florida right now. And yeah, that's something I finished on stream for everybody to see last year. Don't have a proper pic, well I could dig up a picture, but I, I gotta get back to work. <laughs> was terrifying you know for freehanding it wasn't that bad so now we just gotta get that dust in there this has once again glued itself shut 
All right. Really trying to get it in. And then over here, same dealio. Now I wish I really had some accelerator for the super glue. That would make things a lot faster, but I don't. So. So after the engraving and filling, that's what we're left with. I think it went all right. Um, I had to go handheld with the uh, Dremel just because it was cutting a bit too deep with the mount and I didn't want that thick line on the uh, inlay there. So I opted to go with handheld so I could control it a bit better. It's terrifying. Don't want to do anything like that in a while again, but I think the results were decent. Because previously I've just done this art engraving stuff with a scalpel blade, which always takes a little bit of time due to, you know, just, well, having to go over it again and again and again and again and again and again. But now with that part done, I can actually move on to fitting the neck onto the body. I will sand down the headstock tomorrow at the workshop because I'll have an orbital sander at, at my disposal, which will make quick work of that. So let's tidy up a little bit. Thing is, I don't even know if I have a, do I have a single cut file? I do, great. So I can use this to sharpen my scrapers. Huh, they will run out of music. What's off scene from accumulating a whole bunch of hand planes and chisels and gouges and scrapers right now is learn to sharpen the things. Yeah, it's uh, art in and of itself. Um, and there's multiple ways of kind of doing it. You can do it with the wet stones or oil stones or a um, don't know what you call those in English, but different sharpening machinery. Um, and YouTube tutorials, there's so many good YouTube tutorials from a bunch of different woodworkers who will help you out with uh, showing how to sharpen things properly. Um, there is the scary sharp method, which is just a big piece of float glass and then All right, so yeah, now we're stuck with the, uh, the battery died on this. So now, excuse me for having poor camera audio now for this, but yes, there are good tool tips out there on YouTube, which is what I was just saying. But uh, what I'm looking at getting for myself is the scary sharp method. Um, I suggest looking that up. It's very simple. There's just a piece of float glass and then essentially like sandpaper stuff 
um, that you put on top of that with double-sided tape or do they have a tape back I can't remember and then having a then there's a guide that you use to sharpen things very quick very easy and uh, that's something I wanted to get for myself because it's easy to store in this room as well um, yeah seeing as the audio dropped and I'm pretty much almost done with what I needed to get done during this stream I think I'm going to call it pretty soon and go have lunch and then possibly come back later to do this that and the other um, it is probably going to be a sort of later that Frankie for you is going to be uh, very late so I don't, I don't expect you to be waiting up at least on my behalf. Not that you were probably going to do so anyway. But we got through what we were supposed to do today, which is the main thing. The line. Yep. And then radius the fretboard and engraved the uh, inlay. I'm going to go eat lunch now and <laughs> clean myself up because I am covered in dust. But um, thank you very much for watching. I'll catch a stream, I'll catch one. Otherwise, regular, regular videos, yeah. And really, it was so much fun to actually be talking to you uh, now on stream as well. Um, so glad you could actually make it. So yeah, I'll see you whenever you catch another stream and otherwise I'll see you in the comment sections of videos and stuff like that. But hey, you have a great one. Um, it's probably late, getting later for you now. So I guess, I guess good night, but whenever that time is, I don't, I don't know. So yeah, food, coffee, because energy levels are crashing. Good time to end. Thanks for watching. See you guys. And thank you to all the new followers. I really, really appreciate it. Hello, welcome to yet another stream. Um, those who saw the Instagram story, and basically I'm just gonna be chatting. Um, and going over things that I've managed to get done uh, this weekend. I made the weekend stream part one yesterday, so it's only fitting that I do a part two. Um, I would have continued streaming yesterday, but honestly, um, there wasn't much left to be done yesterday. I fit the neck and then that's about it. I'm gonna put on my glasses so I look a little more Oh, hello. Hi. Do you wanna hi say hi to people? Hi. Say hello. Over here, look up. Ellie, look. Oh well. Hey, what's up? How you doing, Red Lair? I'm just about to kind of just go through what I got done this weekend. Yesterday I was working on this neck for the seven string I'm currently working on. Got the um, inlay engraved headstock inlaid with that nice little piece of veneer and today I did some carving so I got the preliminary carve done on the neck um, the customer is gonna come by tomorrow to see how it feels it's still not exactly the right shape but it's giving well it gives a good idea of whether it needs to be thinner still or whether this is a good thickness for it. The thing that I really like that I tried out for the first time is I actually not only did the scoop on the front uh, but I did a scoop on the back just so that I could get a proper volute for once on a flat headstock. And 
up and just looking at this. I'm, I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's one of those really, really small details and added things, but I, yeah, I'm glad, I'm glad I decided to do it. And also, ugh, got the back plate fitted today and did the round overs, did the belly carve. Um, but yeah, it's all slowly coming together. So if Neela is happy with everything tomorrow, then we can move along to sanding and gluing the neck in. Well, yeah, I mean, not yet. <laughs> I The thing that I was supposed to do today, like stream when I got home, was fret the neck. But then, then it just got to the point where I was a little bit too tired. It's been a hell of a week. I've been working a whole lot on this and other things that I just decided that, hey, I'm just going to take the rest of the Sunday kind of chill and um, fret the neck tomorrow. Um, one thing about this, I always need a lot of patience sanding everything before going. Yeah. I know exactly what you mean. I am the same way. It's, um, I really want to put everything together. So doing the boring stuff of sanding beforehand is kind of a bummer. But hey, how you been, man? How you doing? What you been up to? I mean, of course, I've been looking at your um, Instagram post, but nonetheless. Hey, uh, congrats on the new job. How you been liking it so far? still somewhat annoys me that there was a part of me that when we okay that's good that's really nice um, there was a part of me that really really wanted to come and like um, I'm cleaning up the olive ready for this going. nice yep yeah, um, I've just been looking at the wood you've been posting and I'm Getting bad ideas of buying lots of wood that I I need to get rid of the stock that I currently have, but you can never have too much wood. So that sounds very wrong. But anyway, what I was saying, like, or been trying to say now for a little bit, is um, it's really annoying how it's like I really wanted to. In a way, I didn't want to bother you, but back when we last were able to tra travel before. Corona hit. Uh, we were in Amsterdam, and I was thinking, it was like, man, it would be so cool to um, come and see your workshop. Um, I wonder if I could make that happen. But then, then I got to the point where I was like, okay, maybe I'm being rude and um, you know, intrusive, sending you a message and asking if it's like, hey, could I come and see stuff that you're working on? But, uh, yeah. Uh, instead, I went to Aristides because a friend, a friend worked there, or, or I, I knew a guy who worked there, so I went to see Aristides and uh, finally got my hands on those guitars. Because I hadn't played around with them before. Hey, actually, now that you're here, um, I have a project coming up at some point during this year that um, I feel like you would have a little bit more expertise. Too bad, could have gotten a free t-shirt. Oh man. Hey, next time, um, next time I'll uh, come and bug you. Only for the free t-shirt. You'll give me a t-shirt and I'll leave. <laughs> no, but hey, um, I have acquired, so the workshop that I go to, um, there was some, there was one shelf that had just been sitting you know, unused for two years with a bunch of wood and guitar parts and stuff like that. So they were clearing that up and they asked me whether I would want the stuff. Duh, of course. And um, I got like a lot of maple, like a lot of maple, a lot of flame maple. Then I got this, which would be ideal for a neck. 
Um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that's Pow Pharaoh, right? But also, this ready slotted fretboard, it's 30 inch scale. And I'm wondering that what kind of baritone should I make out of this? It's, I would have loved to make an eight string, but it's just not quite wide enough. It's about 71 mil. Even with binding, I don't think I could stretch that all out to 78 on the widest part. But uh, yeah, you're the go-to guy for long scale lengths. <laughs> um, so I'm trying to figure out what to do with this. I also got like, there's another, another build that I'm doing out of the parts that I have because essentially there were parts enough for one full Telecaster build. And I was thinking that I would have, because the person had mahogany tops or mahogany backs. So I was thinking that I'd do like a mahogany thin line, single cut, and then a neck for it. I was thinking that maybe this would be way too much. Also the neck would weigh a hell of a lot. Um, 75, enough for an eight string. Okay, um, so I could potentially stretch that out with with a. Um, sorry, my brain just turned off. I could stretch that out with some nice binding, and what I'm thinking is maybe ebony binding would be pretty cool. I mean, that's a pretty cool color palette right there. Yeah, or a thicker kind of veneer. You're right. But, what do you think? Uh, now I'm guessing from this, deducing from this, should I make an 8 string? Should I make the first IP 8 string out of this? I got 30 inches to spare. So why not go crazy with it? Question is, which model should I make? Granted, I'll need to make make um, bigger. Oh Jesus! I need to make bigger versions of these. But. Neck heavy, you can go with something like this. Doors. Yeah, true. But I was thinking that should I go with either one of my production models and just make an eight string version of that? I've been making a lot of data lists, but I mean, that's kind of the go to thing. Now I'm making a seven string data list. Then if I make the thin line, that's going to be the data list shape. So maybe I should give the Icarus some love and make an eight string. Because, like, I don't mind every now and then doing a custom shape, but like I did for the pointy star guitar thing. But yeah, I crisp was slightly bigger. Like, that's what I'm thinking. It's like, I'll just, I'll have to take the template and then use one of those um, rings on the uh, router to get the router bit to go a little bit wider. That's what I did with the seven string. But this would need to be a little bit bigger. Because I mean, this is what I did. I got it. Oh, you can't even make it out on the camera. But I got that ever so slightly bigger than the template. Yeah, 2% match up with the black part. Hey, tell you what. Yeah, all right, okay. Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna spec this out. I have a lot of 
I don't know about the body wood. I'll need to think of something for that. Um, I do have quite a lot of flame birch that I've processed down, but then I also have this. I've been trying to figure out what it is. I'll give you a bigger picture of this. So there was this discarded pile of wood that then I decided that, hey, I'm gonna save it and use it for something. But essentially I got stuff like this. Not all that certain what it is, but I'm also wondering that for something this particular, having a Powell Faro neck and a lovely fretboard and everything else, that would this be a little bit lackluster having something like this as a top. Also, you got any ideas what that is? Yeah, it's pretty soft. It's, because I've been thinking that is it, yeah, I mean, I'll, you'll get a nail mark in there. Pretty easy. It's very soft, very, well, not very soft. Pretty soft, very lightweight, but I can put my finger on it. See, spruce was something that came to mind initially before I started planing it down, but the grain pattern doesn't really match. Now does it? Because spruce does have a little bit wider grain and the color of it, oh you can't see it on the um, camera there, but the color of it isn't, isn't as yellow as I've had with experience with spruce beforehand. Um, this is a bit more, color wise, it's closer to almost birch, but then it's got faint lines of like almost blue. The knots do look like spruce, I do agree. Tulip wood, oh man. Now that you say that, that looks exactly like some tulip wood that I've worked with. Well, mysteries being mysteries. The blue streaks, yeah. Hmm, hmm, hmm. <laughs> a, lot, a lot of different options of what it could be. Um, yeah, I don't know. But would that be a little bit too rough to go with that? Hey, that was the horror guy, hello. Should I go with, maybe I should go with the um, fancier wood for this, possibly. Do walnut. I do love me some walnut. I do love me some walnut. Yeah, I'm gonna save. I have a huge chunk of bubinga there that I'm looking at, but I'm gonna save that. I think the walnut is probably not a bad idea. So body wood I'll keep for later. Um, uh, crafting's going good. Got a lot done today, and now start, actually started um, specking out an eight string build. Yeah, M8. Yeah. Binding, um, none on the body. Carves, shot unlocking, M6. String trainer, yes, it's gonna have a scoop. Oh, but it's an eight string. String retainer won't. I don't know if they make string retainer for it. I, need to, I might need to make a string retainer for it. Because I do hate having string trees. I don't like them. Okay, so I'll put string retainer custom. Question mark. Strap pins. Those are going to be... Are they... I guess they're just called M8s no matter what they are. Pickup rings, no, none. I got a Granger bridge, so I'll do brass. So I have brass on brass because the Granger bridge has brass saddles. So I have a brass nut. I'll keep that nice and consistent. Inlays. Uh, should we do some fancy inlays? 
Maybe not. I can't think of any inlay to do. So, I like inlays though. It's a shame that I can't think of anything. I'll put custom. Inlay material. It's gonna be either ebony or black resin binding ebony save that as eight spring icarus build 2020 feel pretty good about that um now however i do need to do another one so shape Daedalus. Now this is going to be out of the parts that I came into possession of from clearing out uh, somebody's shelf who had just left it. So next set, that is going to be a Set neck, body wood, mahogany, top wood, mahogany, and back. Top carve, none pickups. They are Kent Armstrong pickups. I have never used these before. Armstrong. Binding, yes, carves, none, none, top color, natural, back color, natural, finish, oil. Parts colors, um, I believe, let's have a look. So these are the parts that I came into possession of. This is gonna be a pretty much a T-type with, oh, that bag was open. Nice old vintage style ashtray. Fridge. Unbranded, so it's probably cheap. But it's made out of the parts that I found, so um, yeah. But chrome uh, tuners are what tuners are these? And do I need to upgrade them? I believe they're all the same. Orientation, they are. String retainer. Oh, it's gonna be string through. Fine, haven't made one of those in a while. It's in here. Pickup covers. All right. Yeah. Japanese pots. Okay. What is this? Oh, that's probably not. Yep. So essentially, this is just going to be a sort of telly. Um, bridge is telly string through ash tray bridge pickup. 
is this one. And it is a Kent Armstrong TL4R. It's going to be interesting to hear what this sounds like. It's going to be a very different different kind of build in comparison to the um, 8 string we just specked out. That's for sure. And then this is a TL4F neckwood. Now, for this, along with everything that I salvaged, I also salvaged a lot of maple, so I guess we'll do a maple. Uh, no alternative woods. Construction, three piece maple neck. That's probably a good way to go. Fretboard. I got ebony. I'll use ebony. Uh, radius. Having a 16 inch radius would seem kind of daft in a way. That's that's what I do for vintage telly fretboard radius. It's like nine and a half, right? Or something like that. Ooh, yeah. Seven and a quarter. To a slightly more flattened nine and a half. <laughs> and I use 16. Let's have a look at what nine and a half looks like. That's not that bad. Seven and a quarter is very round. Nine and a half is still manageable. Doesn't really match the whole vintagey vibe, but that that's pretty much standard on everything. So this is gonna be a vintage vibe. Telly, thin line, so semi hollow. So that's two different guitars, two very different guitars that I have um, coming up for the year. Essentially, the whole point is that now after I'm done with Nilo's guitar, so the one that I'm currently working on, the seven string Evertune Beastie. Um, once that is finished, then I will not have any more deadlines per se for the rest of the year. Instead, I will work on things lined up. For instance, I have the seven string for Mikko with the um, sugar skull inlay. So I need to finish the sugar, finish the sugar skull inlay, and finish that guitar entirely. Then I have the uh, new neck for Johnny's bass. Then, then there is, let's see, what else? Oh. There's this Strat body, which is getting a neck. Um, or there's a neck coming in from elsewhere, and I'm gonna make a body to fit that neck. I'm not gonna be doing any more of these. So before you ask, this is a one-time thing that I promised that I would do, and after that, I'm not gonna do this sort of stuff again. Um, it's just, when I took the job, I had different 
different, idea, different ideas on what I was gonna do in the future, but this will be a one-off just body to match a neck type dealio. Um, then there are two artist guitars without deadline that I can probably talk about because it's kind of, I, I think, kind of obvious that uh, it was gonna happen, but I'm making a guitar each for the guitarists in my band. Which, you know, makes sense. So they're gonna get guitars. Then maybe possibly, hopefully, finishing up the After Hours guitar. Then I have the 10 year anniversary guitar for uh, IP. So essentially, I will be... So 10 years ago, this is the guitar that sent me off on my luthier journey. Yo, DCOM, welcome. Yeah, so 10 years ago, I started my luthier journey with this guitar and I basically chipped bought an old um, Weststone LP type thing and then did a bunch of customization stuff on it. So I am going to make a 10 year anniversary version of this, which actually we could spec out. We already spec'd out the other ones. Might as well spec this one out. So. 10 year anniversary, the shape is gonna be a custom shape. Um, I am gonna make it a set neck. This is not body wood. Now this is something I've been going back and forth upon on what the body, body wood should be because I have no idea what this is. I have no clue. Let's do it. Gonna make it birch, birch body. Top wood is gonna be that's wasting a lot of flame burst that I have. Doing a front and back for it. I can always get more. Not, not hard for me to attain. Because there's also the aspect of possibly wanting to do a relic type finish as I have on this. So maybe that won't work for it. I don't know. I actually don't know what to do for the pickups. Because this has had several in it. It's had, it started off with just the stock, whatever it had. Then I changed in EMG SROs, then EMG H4 and H3, and now a singular Seymour Duncan distortion. I will think about this. Maybe, bare knuckles. I've, I was essentially like uh, my personal guitar, I, I put the EMG H3 and H4 and that originally and switched out to Fishman Fluence and I've been blown away. They, they sound freaking amazing. Parts, color, uh, they are going to be the Schaller and what color do they call it? Vintage copper tuners. Schaller locking M6. We are gonna do bridge pickup, polymath. And aged nickel. Yep, that's what we're gonna do. Pickup rings. Now, I know that this one has pickup rings. I usually don't like them, so none. Um, switch. It's just gonna be a three-way toggle. Backplate. Match body this time around. 
control panel pattern. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of Les Paul like controls. So I think I might just do a one volume, one tone wiring. Have one of them be a push pull. Coil split. Headstock three at three. Ah, uh, three. Reverse, no. Angle, neck wood. Probably gonna be maple neck. Alt wood, none. Construction, three piece. Fretboard is gonna be ebony this time around instead of instead of rosewood, because I am allergic to rosewood, so I always get a little fit out of doing that. Radius, we're gonna go with 16 inches, fret number 22, scale length. This does have a 24.75 scale length, so we're gonna go with that. 43 mil nut, nut material is Corian cream inlays. Now this will get some form of inlays. It's not going to have these because these are well cheesy. So maybe block inlays. Inlay material. Let's do mother of pearl, as this does have that as well. Binding, match, body, finish, satin, relic, logo will be headstock, side dots will be loom and lay. Tenth anniversary. Surrey build 2022, save. All right, so that's three different guitar designs. So it's gonna be a busy year. Busy, busy year. Because once I finish that seven string, there's um, finishing up the three guitars from last year. Uh, new neck for Johnny, the seven string for Mikko with the sugar skull inlay, eight string, thin line telly, 10th anniversary, the Yamaha custom paint job and customization for Neela. I'll show you that in a bit. Upgrading the pine guitar, perhaps the after hours if there's time. And then one project that I can't talk about yet. But it's the only secret thing anymore. But yeah, this is also something. So a Yamaha RGX custom, which is gonna get more customized. It, it has had a fairly rough life and hasn't been shown enough love. So I'm gonna remove the finish off of this. See what it looks like. Gonna carve out the heel a little bit better for better access. Um, the frets aren't too bad. Oh yeah, I'm gonna fill up the whole Floyd Rose cavities and everything like that. It's gonna get just a hardtail bridge. And yeah, we're gonna see 
what this will amount to. This is PI02026, made in Taiwan. Lovely guitar. New electronics definitely going in, because those were pretty shoddy. But I'm looking forward to seeing what is revealed once I remove the paint. Because it it looks like it is a mahogany body, but then this in the control cavity, it looks like there's ash. And look at that, that looks ash to me. And you can see that there is some top on top of this, on top of the uh, mahogany there. So maybe. It's mahogany with an ash top, which would be a very interesting combo. Or then there's some serious discoloration going on, but I doubt it. It'll be curious to see what is revealed underneath. But yeah, got my work cut out for me. There's definitely a lot, a lot of things to do this year, but I am not complaining, not at all. <sighs> yeah. So yeah, that is the weekend stream part two. It's just me chatting about things and as it seems, designing guitars. Um, it's a shame that I only very late in the stream fixed the audio. So I think for the majority, the audio is blasting, which is a royal shame. But hey, I'm gonna go for now and enjoy the rest of my Sunday. Um, thanks for everybody for tuning in and see you guys probably next week at some point. All right, take care. Have a great rest of the evening.